Back when I was an overweight runner, I made every mistake in the book. And those mistakes typically led to me being injured or honestly just me not wanting to get off the coach because I was either so tired or my muscles were so sore. Today I want to share five of those critical mistakes I made so if you come along them you'll know how I navigated through them and, and hopefully you'll be able to get through them as well so you'll be able to achieve your own running success. I'm going to order these from least critical to most critical and I'll put chapters in the description down below so if you're interested in one part of the video more than others just navigate through that using those below and hopefully this helps you out. Something I would do a lot and honestly I still do to this day to some extent is measure myself up against others. I would think that when people are running past me they were judging me because I was running slower than them or I'd say I'm not as fast as these people and then I feel very self-conscious and honestly it was just a spiral, downward spiral of me feeling sorry for myself. And when I was feeling sorry for myself, that would make me want to quit running. So what I did instead was try to just focus on me and measure myself up against only myself. So I would look at my previous runs and compare my times on this specific run to my times previous. And as long as I was getting faster or feeling better at the same pace, I knew that I was progressing in the way that I wanted to. It didn't matter what Sally Joe was doing when she was running along past me. That didn't matter. All that mattered was that I was getting out there and running my own pace. And honestly, that was one of the best changes I could have ever made. I felt so much better about myself at that time. If you're constantly comparing yourself up against other people, try to flip that and compare yourself against yourself only. Look at your runs that you did previous. Think about how you were feeling on those runs and how you're feeling in this day. You may not be feeling good and that's totally fine. There will be better days than others. But ultimately, as long as you're progressing in the longer term, that's all that really matters and you'll be able to reach your own success that way. As I mentioned, I used to get injured quite a bit when I was an overweight runner. And there's a couple of things that I think really made me have those injuries. But one of the things that I did that ultimately stopped me from feeling so terrible when I was running and leading to less injuries was I started to do some dynamic warmups. And what dynamic warmups are, are essentially just you doing some light stretching, but in a dynamic fashion. So you're not holding the static stretches, you're doing like leg lifts and those type of things. I'll do a whole video on the dynamic warmup that I did. So if that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button and I'll release that in the next coming weeks. But what doing a dynamic warm-up allowed me to do was get my body ready to go out there and run. Being overweight, I came from a relatively stagnant lifestyle. I was just sitting on my chair all day, playing World of Warcraft, eating chips. My legs were just not doing a whole much. My body was sitting in one position. And what happened when I started to go running is it was pretty much like pulling on metal rods and those metal rods, well, they snapped and I would get injured quite a bit. So doing that dynamic warm up allowed my blood to start flowing and warm up my muscles so that I was ready to get out there and just, just enjoy the run that bit more. Now, I don't know that this ultimately did, is what le led to less injuries, but it definitely didn't hurt. And even to this day, I don't do a single run without doing a dynamic warm up. I will actually shorten a run if I don't think that I have enough time. I will do a dynamic warm up and then shorten the run portion. That's something I would suggest. If you're not right now doing dynamic warm ups, go out there and do a dynamic warm up. Just do a simple routine. There's tons online that you can do, but like I said, I'll be releasing a video that I specifically did. And along the same lines of injury prevention and feeling better when I'm out there running is I introduced a proper maintenance routine. That's something I definitely didn't do right away at all. I didn't really understand what a maintenance routine was, but fortunately for you, I'm going to explain it. So what I mean when I say maintenance routine is doing the things when you're not running that will make your running more enjoyable and allow you to have better success when you're out there running. A maintenance routine for me typically looks like doing foam rolling after a run or in the evening when I'm watching TV. Doing static stretching after a run is great because your body is warmed up. Now there is some debate whether that helps or not. For me, I think it does help me, so I do it. And I also like to do just glute activation work. And why specifically glute activation work is because that is pretty much what stabilizes your whole kinetic chain. So the line going down your legs when you're out there running, that's a kinetic chain, I guess. I mean, I'm not a biologist, but I, that's kind of my understanding from going to physio. By doing these glute activation works and strengthening my glute, I was able to better stabilize my muscles when I'm out there running so that they were able to withstand the impact better. And ultimately it made it so I was injured less. Since I've been doing these little things, the dynamic stretching before the runs, the static stretching and the foam rolling and the glute activation work after the runs, these things have definitely allowed me to be injury 
free in quotes because I do get little little injuries now and then, but nothing like I used to get. There are a lot of other little things you can do, like you do core work and that type of stuff. That could also be considered maintenance routines, but to me, I include that in cross training. Now, I will do a little video on the maintenance routine that I do. Again, I want to make this little bit of a series for you guys so that when you're starting out as an overweight runner, you have this as a tool to look at as you're out there struggling. You can refer to these videos and hopefully it will help you out. Now, this is something that is very near and dear to my heart. As you might not know, but on this channel, I do a lot of running shoe reviews. But when I first started out running, I didn't see the point of spending $100, $150 on running shoes. That just seemed like a waste of money to me because I can get pretty much the same looking shoe for $40 at Sport Check or wherever you get your running shoes for cheaper. But the reality is those shoes are cheap for a reason. And if you do choose to spend that little bit of extra money, you are getting so much more shoe. It's unbelievable. A shoe that's like $100, $100 compared to a shoe that's $40 to $50, world of a difference, honestly. And what these cheaper shoes do is honestly, they don't provide the support or the impact protection that we as overweight runners really need. So what I want you to do is just, just take that little bit of initial investment and go buy yourself a good pair of running shoes. I'm gonna try to do a video on cheap running shoes that will do a good job at protecting you because there are a lot of great shoes that go on sale quite often. And I think that they would be a, a good alternative if you don't want to buy a shoe at full price. Because I understand running shoes can be very pricey, but I promise you that getting the proper shoe for you will make a major difference in the amount of enjoyment that you're getting out of your runs. And I promise you that once you try a good running shoe, it's gonna change your world. You're gonna be blown out of the water at how different it feels compared to a cheapo running shoe. This is especially important because as an overweight runner, you're probably running to lose some weight or get healthier overall. And sometimes when you're doing that, you can neglect fueling. You could underfuel, and what that's gonna do is lead to low energy, lead to more injuries, and lead to just not wanting to stick to your healthy lifestyle routine. That's, honestly, that's what it was for me. Once I started to underfuel or not fuel properly, I would get very lethargic. I wouldn't want to go out for my runs. I wouldn't want to do this healthy lifestyle thing because I had no energy and the cravings were out of this world. That is just the reality. But when you learn to properly fuel, eat your three meals a day, eat a snack, eat a snack after your run, those type of things, but making sure it's all healthy, real foods, that is when you're going to be successful. I promise you that. Now, it's okay to every now and then have a little bit of a cheat meal or... I, Honestly, I'd rather you eat too much than eat too little when you're first starting running because I know that for me, when I was out there starving myself plus running, it was just a recipe for disaster. The cravings were insane. But guys, if you learn to properly fuel your body when you're out there running, I promise it's gonna make a major, major difference in your whole outlook on running and your, honestly your whole outlook on it changing your lifestyle for the better. I don't have any strict guidelines for this because what works for me might not work for you. It's all up to your own personal preference, but for me, it was eating those real healthy foods. That's all that I changed really. I stopped eating McDonald's. I stopped going out and buying pans of brownies and eating them all. I made a point to make all of my meals myself. I didn't want to buy those pre-made meals because I didn't necessarily know what was going into them. So I made a point to make every single meal myself. I understand that this might not be possible for a lot of people. So do with it what you will. Just do your best and I promise it will get easier over time. That's all for the video, folks. I hope that these five little scenarios help you along on your running journey. For me, there's still a lot I want to get out of my brain when it comes to overweight running and helping you achieve your own running journey success. So make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot. And if you did get something out of this video, if you hit the like button, it will help get this video to more and more people. And I really, really appreciate it. All right, have a fantastic evening.